Hi guys, I'm Aniket Das Gupta and this is a Diffusion at the Movie Special. Just about everything you need to know about Interstellar. So here are 10 things that you need to know about Interstellar. Number 1. The Bootstrap Paradox. Now, the Bootstrap Paradox is a time travel paradox which is a little difficult for me to explain because I can't get my head around it as well. So I'm going to explain it through a film. The actual definition is going to be in the description below. So let's take the Terminator for example. John Connor actually sends someone to protect his mother, but that somebody actually becomes his father. So without that somebody, John Connor wouldn't exist in the first place. So basically something from the future ensures its existence by going back into the past and creating it in the first place. When Cooper falls into that tesseract at the end of the movie, he's actually telling his daughter what to do and these events which his daughter is going to do is going to bring him back over there. So it's a loop and for Interstellar there's not one loop, there are about three particular loops which all intersect in certain places. My friend Anand has made this flowchart which sort of explains all the interlinking between these three loops. It makes Interstellar a lot simpler to understand. Links in the description below. Number two, the unobvious references. If you happen to notice, in the starting of Interstellar, there's this whole montage of this documentary style footage about a few elderly people talking about the Dust Bowl. Apart from Murphy's interview in that, all the other interviews have been taken from a real film called The Dust Bowl by Ken Burns. This refers to a period of time in the 1930s when severe dust storms destroyed crops and hampered agriculture to a large extent, sort of foreshadowing what's going to happen in Interstellar itself. So the other unobvious influence on this film is the film Grapes of Wrath, which sort of inspires the whole rural setting of the film. And then I also felt that there's a huge influence from Terence Malick's films, uh, especially The Tree of Life. I mean, you can put The Tree of Life and Interstellar on the same page and they would sort of feed off each other. Number three, the bookshelf. If you notice closely, the bookshelf has a lot of books which you might think have been, putting, have been put in there arbitrarily, but that's not true. I found that there's this book by Stephen King, The Stand, and this book talks about a post-apocalyptic world where the human race is dying out and there's no chance of survival. There's also another book on that bookshelf called Three Cups of Tea, which describes one man's journey through Pakistan and Afghanistan where he's trying to educate uh, young women and children and how he faces opposition and institutional ignorance. Number four, the obvious influences. This film is filled with obvious influences. Remember the time in the movie when Cooper is explained the workings of a wormhole? Well, that's taken from the film Event Horizon. The exact same procedure using a pencil and paper and sticking the pencil through the paper. The astronaut suits in the film have been borrowed from the right stuff. They're almost the same. Then the spaceship designs themselves. The main spaceship design of Endurance is a clear reference to the spaceship design from 2001 A Space Odyssey and the way the Ranger, the smaller spaceships are designed are just like the Lambda spaceships from Star Wars. In fact, the cockpit is literally the same. There's also a nod to Matthew McConaughey's earlier film, Contact, where uh, Matthew McConaughey gives, Matthew McConaughey's character gives Jodie Foster's character the watch. And in this film, it's Matthew McConaughey's character giving the same to another very important female character in the film, which makes the watch one of the most important things in the entire film. This contact was written by Carl Sagan and the executive producer of Interstellar, that is Kip Thorne, also worked on Contact. So Matthew McConaughey is not just the only connection between the two films. There's also actually a smart nod to all the people who kept saying that this movie has something in similar to the Planet of the Apes. When the ranger crashes into the first planet with all the water, it sort of reminds you of the older Planet of the Ape movies. And if you hear closely, there's a reference to some sort of monkey business. Number 5. Tribute to the Explorers Interstellar contains a lot of references to real-world explorers and writers such as Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who has a character named after him and you find a bunch of books written by him here and there in the film. The main spaceship in Interstellar is named after Sir Ernest Shackleton's Antarctic exploration ship Endurance. Amelia Brand, Anne Hathaway, is named after Amelia Earhart, who is the first woman to cross the Atlantic Ocean on a plane. Edmund's uh, planet, which is basically named after the character Edmund, is named after Edmund Hillary, the first man to climb Mount Everest. Even Matt Damon's character Man is named after a real-world uh, explorer by the name James Man Wordy, who was on Ernest Shackleton's ship Endurance. Number 6. The Artistic and Architectural Influences When Cooper wakes up after falling into the wormhole, he wakes up into this space station which is all circular and it might remind you of Inception. But what that actually is, 
is a O'Neill cylinder, suggested by Gerard K. O'Neill when he when he was theorizing of how mankind is going to go out into space and live. He theorized that we'll be living in cylinders and not in spheres. And when we see Cooper's house on Earth, it has an uncanny resemblance to the house in the painting American Gothic. Number seven, the music. We know that Hans Zimmer did not know the story of Interstellar when he started working on the music for Interstellar. But you can see clear influences from 2001: A Space Odyssey in the way that classical music has been used, and also in the way the music has been treated in the whole film. There's also it has also been influenced by the music from the film Koyani Skatsi. I think the music was by Philip Glass. A lot of similarities to that. Number eight: Do not go gentle into the good night. Now, when we hear this poem throughout the movie, we think that the poem is about being brave, going and exploring things, and you know, bringing change. But that's not what the poem is actually about. The whole idea of the poem is not about hope and life. It's about death and dismay. Sort of referencing to the end of the film. Number nine: the cameos. The elderly Murph is played by Ellen Burstyn, the actor from Exorcist. Uh, Matt Damon makes a cameo into the film. I mean, he sort of ruined everyone's experience by saying that he's going to appear in the film a while back on MTV. Then there's a very subtle cameo by uh, William Devan. who plays the president in dark knight rises he can be seen sitting in the nasa boardroom when they're talking to cooper and number 10 this isn't exactly a spoiler or something but just a theory the ending of interstellar now if you see the actual ending of the film it's pretty bright i mean he meets his do- he- if you see the ending of the film it's pretty bright i mean he meets his daughter he goes back to brand and whatever like they restart human race But what if when he fell into the wormhole he did nothing and whatever is whatever happens after he fell into the wormhole is just his dream or imagination or his consciousness just making things up because if you remember Damon's character man says that the first thing that you what that happens or that rather the last thing that happens when you die is that you see the face of your children so that's sort of what happens here while he is dying he imagines that he wakes up on a space post meets his daughter and then goes out to save humanity and sort of put himself in the same place now i don't know how much of the theory is true and nolan hasn't confirmed like he will never confirm stuff like this we still don't know the ending of inception so we'll always have to live with that we'll never know whether the ending of interstellar is happy or sad but it's sort of inching towards the sad right now i have to watch this movie again those are the 10 things that we thought you should know about interstellar if we missed out on anything you should totally leave it in the comments below we'd love to know more We are going to go out and watch the movie again, and so should you, because I'm sure there's a lot more Interstellar that we don't know about yet. And if you haven't checked out our review of Interstellar, it's right here. Bye bye.